This is the continuation of lecture one. Vision of industrial buildings. Next comes the hill slide washer. This this is an equipment which is cast a circular element with vertically slotted hole that allows a variable angle of rod incision. A matching vertical hole is slotted in the column as shown in figure so that the um, rod is vertically hatched into the column. This is a uh, typical details of pre-engineered building that is a portal frame. This is the connection of column of column to the foundation, the typical connection at the ridge and the typical connection of the rafter and the purling and typical connection of rafter and the column connections. Next is purling and ridge. Purling and ridge span the distance between the primary building structures. They support the roof and wall covering and distribute the external load to the main frame of trusses. They also serve as a flange back bracing for the rafter or column. The function as a part of building's later load resistance system. Eave strut. This is a member that is located at the insertion of root and the exterior wall. It serves as a stiff binder for the beam. The cladding is often hung from the eave strut, hence the total load of cladding including the slide grid are carried by this beam. In braced building, the wind bracing along the eave strut has acted as a stress in the plan view. The eave strut acted as a compression cord in the wind bracing system. The eave strut also supports the drain girders and other secondary elements. This is, these are the type of trusses. King post truss, pitched uh, flat truss, pitched hope truss, fan truss, and queen post truss, pitched fin truss, subdivided parallel truss, uh, parallel cord pad truss, parallel cord hoe truss, parallel cord with diamond K shaped web truss, parallel cord warner truss, trapezoidal truss, and browsing trusses, mansard trusses, constant force in lower cords, constant force in upper cords, wind reeled um, graders. Lantic circle trusses, lantic structure or glazing, and cam cambered uh, trusses, scissor truss, north light trusses, and pitch roof with monitors. This is a multi bay truss over a mess of Berlin University in Berlin. This is an example of cantilever trusses in Uti Railway Station, Tamil Nadu. Here is the this is a truss with a cantilever with one end fixed and another end is free. This is saw tooth. Tooth, umbrella, and butterfly space. In this, it is like an umbrella or soft tooth. This is a valley girder, and this is a vertical grazing. This is a lazing lattice lafter and girder, and this is a side sand section. This is a soft, soft umbrella type. These are used to get large column free areas. Lattice, lattice girders normally span to the width of the building. Soft tooth, umbrella, and butterfly rows are provided in length of direction and supported by the lattice girder at frequent intervals. Pitch of the roof. Mm. If, uh, if the uh, roof covering is a GI sheet, the pitch should be of one third to one sixth. If it is a AC sheet, it should be of one sixth to one twelfth. If it is slab or shingles, it is to uh, be one twenty fourth to one twelfth. If it is flat roof or trapezoidal roof, it should be of one forty eighth to one twelfth. Pitch is a ratio of height of the stress to its span. Pitch provides for drainage of water. When there is a snow load, or a pitch of one fourth is economical. When there is no snow load, adopt a lower pitch up to one sixth. Depth of the trusses. The depth of the trusses should be approximately of for decking industry. It should be of L by 30 to L by 15. The approximate span range is 1.5 to 4. The width of the flange beam should be of L to L by 18 to L 20, and the approximate span should be of 3 to 20. The plate girder should be of L 15, L by 15 to L by 20, and the span range should be of 7.5 to 24 meters. And flint truss is of uh, L by 5 to L by 6, and the approximate span is of 10 to 18. Bowsing trusses are L, 6, L by 6 to L 10, and the approximate uh, span is of 18 to 20, 36 meters. The trapezoidal truss are L8 to L12 and the approximate span is 18 to 36. And the arches are L3 to L5 and the approximate span is 80, 18 to 55. Double layer graders, the approximate depth is L, L by 12 to L by 10, 20 and the approximate span is 10 to 35 meters. Spacing of truss. Larger is the spacing, smaller is the cost of truss. But larger is the cost of Berlin and vice versa. Roof covering also costs more if the spacing is of, of the truss, truss is large. The cost, total cost C is cost of the truss plus cost of the purlin plus cost of the roof. If the cost of the truss is K1 by S plus K2 by S square plus K3 by S, 
for minimum overall cost dc by ds should be zero now simplifying we get ct equal to cost of roof plus two times the cost of furnace economic range of spacing is 1 1 by 50 to one third of the span this is a spacing of furnace load applied between the nodes and load primary analysis of load at the nodes and secondary analysis of drop power as a continuous beam Quadrilateral AC sheets 1.4 meter for 6 mm thick sheets and 1.6 meter for 7 mm thick sheets. Load on stress. The dead load imposed on wind load should be calculated as per IS 873 parts 123. For live load up to 2 kN per meter square, the following formula may be used to get an approximate estimate of weight of the stress. W equal to 20 plus 6.6 times the live load. Where W is the weight of stress in newton per meter square, L is the span of the stress in meter. For welded stress, the self weight of the stress is given by W equal to 53.7 plus 0.53 a, where a is the area of one day. The earthquake load usually not usually do not govern. We should use 18 IS 1893 if required. Load combination when there is no crane load, dead load plus imposed load, dead load plus live load, and dead load plus wind load. Normal to the ridge, parallel to the ridge, wherever it is severe. Dead load plus imposed load plus wind load, which may not be critical in most of the cases. These are the cross section of truss members: light section, that is angle section, T section, box section, and hollow circle section. For heavy section, we use I section and channel section, and for built up section, we use two angle section or two channel section or two I I I sections. Steps for designing the truss member: first step is to select the type of truss and sketch sketch the line diagram of the truss, and second step is to calculate the various load acting on the truss using IS 875 part 125. The design of panel and compute the load acting on the panels, and the last step is analyze the roof truss for various loads combination using a suitable computer program and tabulate the forces according on the member for the various combination. And the this, uh, next step is to design a member for both maximum compression and maximum tension and adapt the size of the vertical force. Check for the limiting standard ratio. When the panel is placed at intermediate point, design of top part are combined bending and actual compression. The design of Uh, joints either as bolded or welded. Check for allowable deflection. Uh, prepare detailed and fabrication drawing with material takeoff. Design bracing diagram. And note that for top cord member and main ties, a double angle is often preferred. This is connection detail of bolted flint truss. In this, the purlins and the uh, roof are connected using bolted connections. This is the connection of uh, two structures. This is the connection of roof and the purlins. This is the connection of uh, purlin and with the column. This is connection with welded. In this, the purlin and the uh, column base are welded, as shown. This is an example of fabrication drawing. This is woven with steel joists. This is a slab and girder column. In this, uh, a tube and rods are used. This is for light roof beams, and this is woven with board joints. Structure with open bed grip grip which is in Germany. This is three lattice deck grider, which is used in uh, usually used in uh, railway stations. <laughs>